Hello and welcome to News Tonight. I'm Tina Jha. Before we begin with the headlines, I appeal to all our viewers to stay safe from the COVID-19 pandemic. We must maintain COVID-appropriate behaviour, that is, wear face masks, wash hands and face regularly, and ensure to maintain physical distancing each time we step outside. Remember, these simple precautions by us are all that it takes to defeat the ongoing pandemic. And now, the top stories of the day. Parliament approval for arbitration and reconciliation amendment bill 2021. Rajya Sabha passes bill that allows courts to impose unconditional stay on arbitration agreements induced by fraud. Lok Sabha passes bill to regularise illegal colonies in national capital. Both Houses of Parliament adjourned till Monday. Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Benkaya Naidu expresses displeasure over opposition parties disrupting House proceedings. The Union Cabinet approves creation of Pradhan Mantri Swasthya Suraksha Nidhi from Health and Education Cess Revenues, non-lapsable reserve fund to help implementation of central health schemes. Neerad Singh Rawat takes oath as the Chief Minister of Uttarakhand. In Haryana, Khattar government defeats no confidence motion brought by the Congress party. And in Kerala, Congress suffers a setback. Senior leader PC Chako resigns, questions party's leadership. In Bengal, Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee files nomination from Nandi Gram. The Parliament passed the Arbitration and Conciliation Amendment Bill 2021 with the Upper House passing it on Wednesday. The bill has already been passed by the Lok Sabha. It seeks to ensure that stakeholder parties can seek an unconditional stay on enforcement of arbitral awards in cases where the arbitration agreement or contract is induced by fraud or corruption. The bill replaces an ordinance that was promulgated in November last year. Here's more. The Upper House on Wednesday passed the Arbitration and Conciliation Amendment Bill 2021 with a voice vote. I think the eyes have it, the eyes have it, the eyes have it, the bill is passed. Law Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad said, the bill seeks to check fly-by-night operators who take advantage of the law to get a favourable award by fraud. It also seeks to make India a hub of international commercial arbitration. So, to corruption se agreement karo, corruption se natural resource lo. Us sabhi ki sarkar kuch kaam karti nahi hai. Hamari sarkar aayi, sari garbadi pakdi, aaj inkari ho rahi hai. Ab wo kya kar rahe hai? Ki hamko pura paisa bhi do. Participating in the debate, BJP's Mahesh Podar said that the bill reflects the government's commitment for transparent mechanisms in every sphere of governance. महोदय हमें यह नहीं बोलना चाहिए कि हमारी भारतीय कानून व्यवस्था का एक दूसरा प्रावधान है कि चाहे 100 मुजरिम छूट जाए लेकिन एक गैर मुजरिम को सजा नहीं मिलनी चाहिए और इस भावना के साथ में जब प्रधानमंत्री जी ने चौकीदारी की बात करते हैं तो वो चौकीदारी वो चौकीदारी जहां जहां जो बेईमानी हो रही थी उसको रोकने के लिए प्रावधान किए गए हैं और कड़े प्रावधान किए जाएंगे मैं इस बिल का पूरी तरह समर्थन करता हूं Members also sought clarification from the minister on certain provisions of the bill. Under section 34 2A of the act which has to be which has to be read with section 36 
it states that an award shall not be set aside merely on the ground of an erroneous application of the law or by re-appreciation of evidence. So the question of re-appreciation of evidence is not provided for in section 34. It is not, not an appeal provision. But how is it possible that a prima facie case can be made out without first providing for it in section 34? In case of fraud, if there is a coercion or there is an undue influence or there is a corruption, definitely the court is having absolute authority to grant stay of the operation of such awards for the reasons to be recorded in writing. What else is required to have a stay? Grant of stay is purely within the discretion of the Honorable Court. Arbitral awards where the underlying arbitration agreement or making of the arbitral award is induced by fraud or corruption. The amendment also aims to promote India as a hub of international commercial arbitration. The bill seeks to amend the Arbitration and Conciliation Act of 1996 so as to enable automatic stay on awards in certain cases and specify regulations for the qualifications, experience and norms for accreditation of arbitrators. Arbitration is an alternative dispute resolution procedure in which a dispute is submitted by agreement of the parties to one or more arbitrators who make a binding decision on the dispute. Conciliation is also an alternative dispute resolution instrument where parties seek to reach an amicable dispute settlement with the assistance of the conciliator who acts as a neutral third party. Kriti Mishra's report for Sunset TV. The proceedings of the upper house in the pre-launch session were washed away due to repeated protests by opposition members on the issue of the farmers' agitation. Chairman Naidu urged the members to allow the House to function and take up the cause during discussion on the working of the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare. The issue has already been discussed in the first half of the budget session. As the House met for the day, Leader of Opposition Malikarjan Kharge demanded a discussion under Rule 267 on the issue of farmers. The Chairman disallowed the notice and urged the members to take up zero hour. Sir. We have already given a notice under Rule 267. Nearly our four young leaders that uh, regarding farmers' issue problem and uh, whatever three laws are passed in this house and against that the farmers of Punjab, Haryana, Western UP, and throughout Please, not throughout, details, not throughout details. So. country, they may not be visible here, but we are not discussing. Country, we are not discussing the issue. You just no, want we are to not. Sir, I am requesting you, you allow under 267 rule to discuss this issue so that. Thoroughly we can discuss, let the government right. take whatever decision. Okay, Till then, no, it, it will not be fair uh, without taking notice of these uh, three, uh, you, we can't proceed, sir. That's Please. why Please. I request you, you to suspend all the rules you, you. and take it. This seven, I have gone through it. Sri Deependra Huda, Professor Manoj Kumar Jha, Sri Tiruchya Siva, Sri Raju Satav, Sri Pratap Singh Bajwa, they have given notice about the farmers. Just, I have, whatever notice I have received, I am talking about it. About the farmers issue and the need to discuss it and to suspend the yes. other business of the house. Yes. Yes. And uh, subsequently, Mr. Ashok Siddhartha has given a notice again on the issue of petroleum prices and uh, uh, price rise. That we have already disposed of yesterday. About these four notices also, I would like to tell this house, this house, in this session itself, first part itself, has discussed about farmers' issue and farmers' agitation, and then we have taken it up. So I am not going to allow it. I have, I have deserved, I have deserved, I have deserved, I have deserved, the notice and uh, there are Sanjay, you go to your seat. Sanjay, you go to your. You, 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 they, 
ये रिकॉर्ड में नहीं जाएगा ये रिकॉर्ड में नहीं जाएगा सो नो यू डोंट वॉन्ट डिस्कशन यू हैव डिस्कशन यू हैव डिस्कशन ऑन फार्मर्स मिनिस्टर मिनिस्टर ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड रूरल डेवलपमेंट फूड प्रोसेसिंग दिस इज रिस्टेड फॉर डिस्कशन एंड ऑलमोस्ट आई थिंक टू आवर्स और थ्री आवर्स इज गिवन As the protests continued in the house, the chairman said that disruptions will not do justice to the cause of the farmers. However, as the opposition members refused to relent, the chairman adjourned the house till noon. The question hour was also stalled due to repeated disruptions. The deputy chairman adjourned the house till 2 p.m. Chairman Naidu apprised the members of the house about the launch of Azadi ka Amrut Mahotsav from Gujarat to commemorate 75 years of the country's independence. The event will commence from the 12th of March this year with a pad yatra from Gujarat's Sabarmati Ashram to Dandi over 24 days. It will culminate on the 5th of April, thus following the footsteps of Bapu to commemorate the historic Dandi march undertaken by Mahatma Gandhi in the year 1930. as you are aware this year year 2021 we shall be entering into the 75th year of our independence to mark this occasion the government of india has planned azadi ka amrut mahotsav from 12th march 2021 which will continue till 15th august 2023 please the celebrations are to be dotted with several events exhibitions social media campaigns virtual shows and site events across all the states and union territories of the country the mahotsav will commence on 12th march 2021 with the pad yatra from sabarmati to dandi stretching over 24 days and culminating on 5th april 2021 thus following the footsteps of bapu to commemorate this historic dandi march undertaken by bapu in 1930 during the aforesaid period the 75th year of our independence indeed is a special occasion for all of us and citizens of our country and azadi ka amrut mahotsav will definitely add to the ethos values spirit of freedom we all cherish i urge upon the honorable members to take part in the mahotsav in large numbers and in various capacities in their own respective areas and spread the values and ideals which our freedom fighters always stood for and helped our country gain freedom from the yoke of colonial rule Earlier in the day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi asked BJP MPs to actively participate in the year-long celebrations marking our 75th Independence Day. He was addressing the BJP Parliamentary Party meeting in the Parliament House complex. The Parliament on Wednesday passed the National Capital Territory of Delhi Laws Special Provisions Second Amendment Bill 2021. to regularize unauthorized colonies in delhi while the rajya sabha had passed the bill on the 9th of february it sailed through the lok sabha on wednesday while replying to the debate on the bill housing and urban affairs minister hardeep singh puri told the lok sabha that the bill would give protection to unauthorized colonies from sealing till the 31st of december 2023 he also said the history of the problem of unauthorized colonies in the national capital territory of delhi was long pending no government took up this issue with any degree of seriousness there are around 1700 unauthorized colonies in delhi so when it became obvious to me and to my ministry that in 2019 they wanted another two years it became clear that the criminal neglect between 2006 and 14 was now being compounded that is when we brought this law in in 2017 and we would have completed the work of unauthorized colonies had it not been for the pandemic so i commend this bill for adoption by this house so that protection from sealing etc will be available till 31st december 2023 And the Lok Sabha proceedings were also repeatedly adjourned on Wednesday amid din created by opposition members over the three farm laws. The opposition members demanded a repeal of these laws. Speaker Om Birla repeatedly asked the members to let the question hours function smoothly. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi said 
that Prime Minister Modi wanted to make a statement in Lok Sabha on Azadi Ka Amrut Mahotsa to celebrate 75 years of India's independence, but was not able to do so due to the ongoing disruptions. Amid Din, the chair adjourned the House for the day. The Lok Sabha will now meet on the 15th of March. 12th March, the Amrut Mahotsa Ka कार्यक्रम दांडी से शुरुआत हो रहा है इसके बारे में मान्य प्रधानमंत्री जी एक स्टेटमेंट देना चाहते थे उसके लिए हमने मान्य स्पीकर को नोटिस भी भेजा था मान्य स्पीकर साहब ने अनुमति भी दिया था लेकिन इसमें सहमति नहीं बन पाए है इसलिए स्टेटमेंट नहीं हो रहा है जब स्टेट जब सहमति बन जाएगी तब मान्य प्रधानमंत्री आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव का एक वर्ष के कार्यक्रम के बारे में जो कुछ भी देश में कार्यक्रम चल रहा है चलने वाले है उसके बारे में प्रधानमंत्री जी सब सहमति बनेंगी सब स्टेटमेंट देंगे द यूनियन कैबिनेट ऑन वेंसडे अप्रूव द प्रधानमंत्री स्वास्थ्य सुरक्षा निधि टू प्रोवाइड एनहांस्ड एक्सेस टू यूनिवर्सल एंड अफोर्डेबल हेल्थ केयर थ्रू अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ इयर मार्क रिसोर्सेज The finance minister while announcing the Ayushman Bharat scheme in the budget speech in the year 2018 had spoken about replacement of existing 3% education cess by 4% health and education cess the fund will be made from the proceeds of health and education cess levied under the finance act 2007 the fund is being set up as a single non lapsable reserve fund it will be utilized for the flagship schemes of the health ministry These schemes include the Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana, Ayushman Bharat Health and Wellness Centers, National Health Mission, Pradhan Mantri Swasthya Suraksha Yojana. PMSSN will also be utilized for emergency and disaster preparedness and responses during health emergencies. It will also be used for any future program or scheme that targets to achieve progress towards SDGs. and the targets set out in the national health policy 2017 the official statement said that the major benefit of the fund is that the amount will not lapse at the end of the financial year tirath singh rawat was sworn in as the new chief minister of uttarakhand on wednesday replacing trivendra singh rawat uttarakhand governor baby rani maurya administered him the oath of office Currently Rawat is BJP's Lok Sabha MP from Pori Gadwal as well as the National Secretary of the party. Earlier in the day Rawat was chosen as the leader of the Uttarakhand BJP legislature party at a meeting of the BJP MLAs. Prime Minister Narendra Modi congratulated Tirath Singh Rawat saying he has vast administrative and organizational experience. The Prime Minister also expressed confidence that under his leadership the state will continue to scale new heights of progress and in haryana the manohar lal khattar led bjp jjp government won the trust vote in the state assembly against the no confidence motion moved by the opposition congress party on wednesday the motion was supported by 32 members and opposed by 55 members During the discussion Chief Minister Khattar said that the BJP government in Haryana has made all round development listen it hoga jab bhi aapka shasan raha hai lekin hum shuru din se raj ko seva ka ek madhyam mante hain aur usme seva ke naate samaj ka jo varg hai har ek varg ki chinta karte hain usme kisan ho usme mazdoor ho दुकानदार हो कारखानेदार हो कर्मचारी हो यानी पेंशन भोगी हो महिला हो नौजवान हो रोजगार बेरोजगार सबकी हम चिंता करते बराबर करते हैं प्राथमिकता में हर साल की प्राथमिकता हो सकती है द चीफ मिनिस्टर एडेड दैट नो कॉन्फिडेंस इज एन ओल्ड कल्चर ऑफ द कांग्रेस पार्टी ही सेड एवरीबॉडी नोज अबाउट देयर नो कॉन्फिडेंस विद ईच अदर विद इन देयर पार्टी अविश्वास वास्तव में संस्कृति कांग्रेस की पुरानी है कि जब भी कभी कोई बात पसंद ना आए अच्छी हो माड़ी हो अविश्वास पैदा कर दो वैसे तो ये अविश्वास 
विद इन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कांग्रेस का खूब देखने को मिलता है हमें तो इतना पता है कि ये अविश्वास की जो कार्यशैली है कांग्रेस की ये कांग्रेस को लाभ नहीं देने वाली कभी भी विश्वास ही जो है वो लाभ देगा चाहे अपने अंदर का हो चाहे एक दूसरे का पति हो Deputy Chief Minister Dushyant Chautala sought to assure that the government will protect the interests of the farmers. कि आने वाली एक तारीख से जब procurement शुरू होगी, जो ब्रह्म आपने फैलाया था कि मंडियां बंद हो जाएगी, MSP खत्म हो जाएगी, हमारी सरकार मंडियों को और मजबूत भी बनाएगी और एक के किसान को उसके MSP का मूल्य दो दिन में उसके खाते में देने का काम करेगी। हमारी सरकार गंभीर है। कि केवल मात्र ये पांच छह फसलें नहीं चाहे सब्जियां चाहे और ऐसी प्रोड्यूस हो जो किसान की मेहनत से लगन से आज उगता है उसको पूरा भाव देने का काम करें एंड टाइम नाउ फॉर ऑल द न्यूज एंड व्यूज फ्रॉम द पोल बाउंड स्टेट्स West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee filed her nomination from Nandigram Assembly seat where she is taking on former TMC leader who recently switched to the BJP, Suvendu Adhikari. Accompanied by Party General Secretary Subrata Bakshi, Banerjee filed her papers at the Haldia Subdivisional Office after taking part in a two-kilometer road show. And after filing her papers, Mamata Banerjee said that she is confident of winning the Nandigram seat which was the epicenter of the anti-farm land acquisition movement that had catapulted her to power back in 2011. The TMC chief will contest from Nandigram for the first time after relinquishing her Bhawanipur constituency in Kolkata. While ahead of filing his nomination in Nandigram, Suvendu Adhikari said Mamata was an outsider in Nandigram. Adhikari will be filing his papers on the 12th of March. He had won the Nandigram seat in the 2016 assembly poll, while another TMC candidate emerged victorious from the constituency in 2011. The left-led opposition Grand Alliance has fielded CPIM's Meenakshi Mukherjee from the Nandigram seat. The BJP has announced names of three candidates for Assam and two for the West Bengal Assembly elections. The party has fielded Milan Das from Hailakandi, Parmanand Rajbongshi from Sipajhar and Ramkrishna Ghosh from Hojai for the second phase polls in Assam. And with this, the BJP has announced the names of 74 BJP contestants for the first two phases of the Assembly elections in Assam. From West Bengal, the BJP nominated Supriti Chatterjee from Barjora and Hiranmoy Chattopadhyay from Kharagpur Sadar in West Bengal. In a major setback to the Congress party in Kerala ahead of the assembly elections, senior leader PC Chako on Wednesday resigned from the party. Chako alleged that the seats were divided on the basis of factions and blamed the central leadership for failing to lead the party effectively. Chako has sent his resignation letter to Interim Congress President Sonia Gandhi. Addressing a press conference, Chako alleged that the party's candidates for 6th April Assembly polls in Kerala was being determined in an undemocratic way by two groups, one group headed by Uman Chandi and the other group headed by Ramesh Chenitala. The AIADMK has released a list of 171 candidates for the state assembly election, taking the total number of declared nominees to 177. The party had earlier released the names of six candidates, including Chief Minister E. Palaniswamy. The AIADMK is contesting the Tamil Nadu assembly elections in alliance with the BJP and the PMK. The AMMK, led by TTV Dhirakaran, has released its first list of candidates for the upcoming polls. The party released its first list of candidates for 15 constituencies. Of 15 in the first list of AMMK, 11 are former MLAs and one is a former member of parliament. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin will visit India from the 19th to the 21st of March. During his visit, 
Secretary Austin is expected to meet Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and other senior dignitaries of the government. Both sides are expected to discuss ways to further strengthen bilateral defence cooperation and exchange views on regional security challenges. Secretary Austin's visit to India as part of his first overseas travel emphasises the strength of the India-US strategic partnership. A third Scorpion-class submarine, INS Karanj, was on Wednesday commissioned into the Indian Navy after two years of rigorous sea trials. The submarine was launched in January 2018 for sea trials and will increase the strength and capability of the Indian Navy. The Scorpion-class submarine was commissioned into the Indian Navy in Mumbai in the presence of Chief of Naval Staff Admiral Karambir Singh and Admiral Retired V.S. Shekhawat. Six Scorpion-class submarines are being built in India by the Mazagao Dock Shipbuilders Limited Mumbai under collaboration with Naval Group France. Two submarines of this class, INS Kalwari and INS Khanderi, have already been commissioned into the Navy. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu on Wednesday greeted all CISF personnel on the occasion of their 52nd raising day. Taking to Twitter, the Vice President said that the nation is grateful for their invaluable service in safeguarding and protecting several key government institutions and private sector units. Prime Minister Modi also greeted the CISF personnel and their families on the occasion. Lauding the Central Industrial Security Force on its raising day, the Prime Minister said that their role in furthering national safety and progress is deeply valued. The Prime Minister also shared a video of CISF's raising day celebrations in 2019. He shared the video on Twitter. The CISF was set up in 1969 and is tasked with the security of vital government and industrial buildings. So that's it from us in this bulletin. But before we leave, I once again appeal to all our viewers to stay safe from the coronavirus pandemic. Remember to wear your face masks, wash your hands and face regularly, and do ensure that you maintain physical distancing whenever you step outside. Remember, these simple precautions are all that it takes to defeat the pandemic, which is not over yet. Good night. Thank you for your time.